Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another edition of the Spurs Chat Podcast. After 71 days, Tottenham Hotspur finally had their man and Foster Coglu becomes Tottenham's new head coach on a four-year deal. Uh, an official announcement was released by Tottenham Hotspur Football Club earlier today. It states, we are delighted to announce the appointment of Ange Foster Coglu as our new first team head coach, becoming the first Australian to manage in the English Premier League. And will join us on the 1st of July on a four-year contract. Tottenham Hotspur chairman Daniel Levy said and brings a positive mentality and a fast attacking style of play. He has a strong track record of developing players and an understanding of the importance of the link from the academy. Everything that is important to our club. We are excited to have and join us as we prepare for the season ahead. My co-host tonight, I've got Craig Dearman back with us. Craig, how are you? I'm all right, Chris. Yeah, looking forward to this and getting Ellie's valuable insight into our, our new new manager. You can see, see he's upset. I know he's upset for losing. Apparently, a, a great guy who's very much loved at Celtic. So, apologies to Celtic fans, but we will look after him, I promise. Well, we've got very special guest, Celtic fan Ali Ross with us. Ali, thanks so much for joining us to give your insight on Ange Postacoglu tonight. No um, first of all, welcome to the channel. And how are you feeling about this news? Kind of thought it was coming. Uh, I'm glad he's not went to a Southampton or a Leicester or one of these provincial clubs, um, mainly because we lose a lot of players for money, obviously, uh, to a lot of these smaller clubs that have got no fan base. And the size of our club we shouldn't shouldn't happen, really. But obviously, we're playing in a league where we don't make very much money. So, Ali, how did the... How did the Celtic fans feel two years ago when he was appointed? Didn't know who he was. Exactly like you guys are now. Who is this guy? You know, what's he all about? Uh, yeah, just total underwhelmed, I suppose, is the best word. And people started getting on board slowly? Oh, within weeks. He's brilliant. How's your season been? Because, of course, you've done the treble. Um, a couple of uh, trophies under um, him as well. Five trophies in, in two years. You must be absolutely delighted with how the season's gone. Yeah, uh, attacking-wise, he's, he's superb. I mean, that's the... I, I heard that thing today. He's That's the most goals Celtic have scored in a season since 1938. Wow. So, wow. yeah, uh, it's high possession, high press, you know, inverted full-backs, you name it. He does the whole shebang. He'll not mess about. If anyone doesn't play his style, they'll be gone. Well, yeah. You want to come in, Greg? Yeah, I was going to say, you mentioned the full there, Alex. Alex. Me, me and Eddie um, obviously spoke at length about this. And, and he plays four at the back early. That's fair enough to say. And he plays four at the back is his general form, you know, formation, isn't it? And yeah. the strong emphasis is what you said on the full-backs. Um, he trusts them to come inside and he trusts the centre-backs to be... Uh, to be able to do their job and defend, basically, is that that's that's correct, isn't it? So, so what we were saying about Romero, we think Romero is, is going to be able to handle that. But you, what 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 do you think Eric Dara will be able to do if if he stays at the club? Do you, do you think he's going to be up to it, or do you think we've got to invest just, in that area? He'll just not stay at the club, mate. He's just not good enough. He hasn't been for years. Not for Tottenham, I don't think. Just my opinion. I think he's he's a weak, he's a weak link. I think you could get better. And you wouldn't have to pay that much for thirty million would get you better than Eric Dyer. Yeah. yeah. And that's just yeah. that's a fact. I think I think Tottenham have underperformed. I mean, look, everyone will probably tell you the same thing. You know, you had a guy in Pochettino, he wasn't a winner, but he played nice football. Still didn't win anything. You know, you brought in two outdated coaches that can't keep up with today's game. That's why he didn't win anything with them. You know, this guy is going to bring you... And you've got to remember, that he, he's come from the City group. You know, his principles were all backed on Pep Guardiola the lot. You know, so he the, the team in Brisbane Roar, that's owned by the City group. Yokohama, they're owned by the City group. Won titles for both of them. You know, he won the Asian Cup for the Aussies. That's not been done before. You know, the guy's a winner. I'll tell you that much. He'll not take any rubbish. Ali, at the age of 57, are you surprised that he hasn't had that big break before this? Not, not really. I mean, look, there's a snobbery in the English Premiership and, and some of the big leagues. 
when it comes to other coaches in other leagues. Just because the they're from a smaller league doesn't make them a winner or, or capable of coaching a team. You know, I mean, you know, the guy at Bodo Glimp, uh, that's who we're hoping to get. Now, they beat us 5-1 last year. You know, and, you know, his style is good. But then Ronnie Delia was a good coach. But the size of Celtic was just too big for him. You know, you've got the advantage of knowing that you've got a manager that's used to that kind of pressure. And it's not about what league we're in. It's about he can handle the fans, the media, the size of the club. You know, he can he can run it top to bottom. You know, he's done it. You know, and the other thing you'll look at as well is he'll go into the Asian market. Definitely. You know, because our boys aren't even playing for Japan. We've only got one that plays for Japan at the minute. That's Maeda. I think he'll take Maeda with him. He loves him. He's like a wee son. Because he had him at Yokohama. But he'll run all day. Is that is that the only player he'll bring with him? Furuhashi, possibly. I, I, I just don't... I'm not so sure... Furuhashi's a good player, but I'm not so sure if he'd be able to cut it in the English Premiership. That's just been honest. A yeah. lot of fans, Celtic fans, would disagree with me, but... You know, don't be wrong, he scored in big games, but he just didn't really do it in Europe. You know, and my concern there is that in Europe, if you're, if you're against a good team, he, he gets in the in the spaces, which is good, and he gets in in front of people, but you won't know some of these players until they get in there. You know, so I don't think he'll take a lot from Celtic. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll put down a list of guys that, because Craig had asked me earlier today, I mean, there's Lyle Abada. He's a wee Israeli guy. He's only 20. But if you Google it and look at his stats, you know, he's playing like 20 games, scoring 10 goals and like 13 assists and stuff like that. You know, and if you put him on the opposite side of uh, Son, they two are going to score goals for fun. I'll tell you who'll score a lot more goals for his Son. You see these guys that are out on the wing. They come in and use the half space a lot. And so they're yeah. inventing fullback, uh, fullbacks. You know, and your midfielders are pushing on. So a lot of them are coming in there and balls are coming across them because they just confuse the defence. So I think he'll score a lot more Son. Definitely. There was a guy on one of the hangs. I mean, I've got a couple of hangs if I'm allowed to present that, that would kind of show you what you're up against or what you're going to be getting. One of them's the first media. He was mic'd up, Postacoglu, and how he was doing a training session. Lasts about five minutes. Another one's about why Ange would be perfect for Spurs. And, and what this guy says in the second one is exactly what I was trying to tell Craig earlier on. Yeah, I'll tell you, you said about <laughs> uh, Son getting goals there, Ali. Yeah. Who do you, who do you think of our team? Because you you know most of our players. Who do you think will thrive under Poster Coglu? Do you think do you think Harry Kane will thrive? Do you think um? Well, yeah, Kane will love it. Son. Kane will love yeah. it. Aye, aye, because he's he's intelligent enough. Eh? You know, it's about just nipping in front of. A lot of the time, balls are coming in whipped in, mate. Uh, he'll nip in in front of defenders all the time. They'll not know if he's going left or right. He'll know what he's doing. He's a switched-on player, and, and look, he'll bang on goals for fun with his team. He'll get 30 goals in a season, working with that, you would think, if you get the right players. The only thing you haven't got is two centre midfielders that are classy enough, to be honest with you. Now, he does make players better. I don't really know much about the guys you've got there, but from what we said about earlier on, they're kind of more like holding midfielders. He tends to play more with a, a pivot like a Pirlo. Although he's never had a Pirlo, he's Cal McGregor plays that kind of role where he's just there controlling the tempo of the game, and then everyone else just plays off of him, you know. And, and he has to trust the defenders to do the same thing, so that's why I don't think Eric, Eric Dyer possibly could do that because he's been a decent enough midfielder. And I don't want to pick on the guy, but I just don't think for Spurs and what he will need, he's will be good enough because I don't think he's got the pace as much. He's going to need a couple of guys at the back that can beat the ball over the top. Because you're going to be at the halfway line for most of your team. <laughs> I think I think there'd be a lot of Spurs fans actually, Ali, hoping that Eric Dyer will be one of the players leaving. But can I just go back again to um, his style and formation? Um, how how long was he at the club before the Celtic fans really started to see the type of football that he wanted to play? Because obviously it takes time to you know. Right. So give he, it... he needed to coach that, and we lost. I believe we lost out the first six games. We lost four of them, and that's losing for Celtic. You know, uh, but then he lost two games for the rest of the season or something like that. So, you know, when they started winning, I think it was about the players believing in the system. Uh, and after that, they just didn't really look back. You know, we were behind Rangers in points there. Went ahead in January the 9th. But the other thing you got to remember is that he came into a broken club. We were 25 points behind Rangers. Yeah. The season he came in. And we, we won the league by 14 points. You know, that's a big swing in anybody's book. 
and you've got to be yeah. a good coach to put a team together. I mean, people can say what they like about the Scottish League. Rangers were in the European final that year. You know, it's not like they were some diddy team. If you know what I mean, they, they beat Lazio and stuff. So, you know, they were, they were a decent side, and they still are a decent side. Both teams are decent, but when you don't have the finances, I mean, you guys will just have the benefit as well as now of just far better players. As a whole, how did the Celtic fan base feel about him leaving? Good. A lot of them feel it's a bit like Brendan Rodgers. They, they see it as a betrayal, but that's... Mate, he had players there, and the minute they said they didn't want to be there, he just got rid of them. And they were big players for us. And yeah. he just said to them, go. You know, and he's the same himself. You know, They've all got ambition. His ambition is to... you know, He'll see this as representing Australia, possibly Greece, because that's where he's from. Uh, you know what he's done in Japan. It'll be he'll be doing this not just for himself. He's a quite a humble guy. He'll be doing this for all the coaches in Japan, all the coaches in Australia, thinking this is the stepping stone that some of these guys could get into. It, you know, like Kevin Muscat took over his job. I, I doubt he'll get the Celtic job, by the way, because he's ex-Rangers. But apart from that, he seems to be doing quite a good job. But yeah, I, I, yeah, they're, they're just despondent just now, mate, because we, we thought he would. Was having Champions League next year, we thought he would stay. And to be honest with me, it, it's not a case of you chose him, he's chose you. He's had about six offers this year alone. Mm. You know, the Everton job was there, he had the uh, Leicester come up. You know, there's loads of jobs come up that he's been touted for. And he just wasn't interested. But Ali, it was, quite, un it was quite unusual two years ago that he came to Celtic alone, didn't bring any backroom staff. That's right. Would you expect any backroom staff at Celtic to join him at Spurs? Well, it's out today that John Kennedy has asked to go with him as his number two. And John Kennedy isn't very well... I get annoyed with the Celtic support. John Kennedy's been there. He was a, a great defender. Probably could have been one of the best. Got injured by a Romanian guy when he was 26 in a Scottish international. He's a really, really good player. Ruined his career, but he's been a coach ever since. And the last four managers, so you've got Brendan Rodgers, Neil Lennon, Delia, and now Posikoglu, all spoke really, really highly of the guy. And yet, when we didn't make 10 in a row, it was John Kennedy's fault. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Apparently, mm. he's a really good coach, but yeah, it looks like he'll possibly go. Maybe Gavin Strachan, Gordon Strachan's boy. Yeah. Because uh, he's he was brought in. Uh, there's like foot, football analysis guy, I think, or something like that. Uh, but he didn't, he'll feel comfortable with whoever. You know, your man Mason, if he's been there a while, he'll, he'll not rock the boat with that side. He'll, he'll see what they've got to offer before he just says, no, I'm the one. Ali, Roy writes on screen now, as yeah. fans, the only thing we can do is get behind the new coach. Um, is, that, is that exactly how the Celtic fans felt two years ago? Because I've read and seen many reports that a lot of Celtic fans, a lot of general football fans laughed at the appointment two years ago. <coughs> Yeah, he proved everyone wrong in weeks. Um, I would say that, look, he's, he's your manager. Why not get behind him? Mm. You know, he's he's got a track, a proven track record of winning trophies. Now, if you want to be snob about it and, and look at the leagues he played, then fine. The guy's a winner. He's not... Look, this guy isn't coming to come fourth in that league. Yeah. He'll have everyone convinced this season that they're going to win that league. Tell that now. You just wait till you hear him speaking. You'll understand what I mean. He'll be telling everyone, we're, we're winning the league this year. He'll say to them, he'll say, look, we don't need to beat Man City twice. You know, we just need to beat everybody else. <laughs> Ali, yeah. are you telling us the trophies are coming soon then? I'm just saying that'll be his mentality. You know, I can't guarantee. Yeah. It all depends on the backing he gets off Levy. It all depends what he can bring in. You know, you all know that, you know, Chelsea is going to be stronger. Man United is going to be stronger. Yeah. You know, that's the problem with the Premiership. So I agree, the Premiership, the Scots Premiership and there isn't a league in the world that's like it you know because you've got everyone talks about Scotland being a weak league well, it's funny how many times is PSG going to win the league Bayern Munich you know Barcelona or Real Madrid you know every league's the same you know Italy's a wee bit different lately but most leagues it's one by one or two clubs it has been for the last decade you know so and that's that. the only reason it doesn't happen in the Premiership is because they've all got that equal funding where even a Brighton can come in and come eighth you know, yeah. we've, got, we've got clubs just in your championship that can outbid us for players. You know, and, and what would be funny, we've got a bigger fan base than Spurs. You yeah. know, I mean, Celtic's yeah. fan base worldwide is huge. You know, you, you Google 
any city in the world, in America, all these places, and you Google Celtic supporters clubs, and I'll guarantee you'll find one there. You do the same for Tottenham, see how many you find. You know, worldwide, they've got a huge fan base. You know, and we, we just don't have the finances. I mean, if we ever got an English Premiership, which I doubt we ever will, and Celtic's problem is, is you've got that Irish Republican Army Brigade, and that's why they'll never get down there. They'll start singing that stuff down there. They'll just get riots. No. Ali, um, Matt Smith, who played for uh, Poster Coglu at Brisbane Raw, he came mm. out today and said, it didn't matter if you were the biggest player in the dressing room or the youngest. There's zero tolerance for players that don't want to follow what he wants to do. 100%. How br how brutal is this manager? Yeah, he'll, he'll just drop you. Uh, can I present something to stay on this? It's a YouTube thing on Poster Coglu. Uh, we can't we can't play it through this stream, no. All right, okay. But we can <laughs> certainly recommend two, it to the there's viewers. Two stream, there's two streams you want to Google on YouTube. Ange Postacoglu mic'd up, as in mic'd up with a thing, and why Ange Postacoglu is perfect for Spurs. Google both of them on YouTube, and that'll tell you exactly what I'm trying to explain you. Everything that's in both of their things is what yeah. you'll bring. And it's just, he'll, he, he, look, we're the guy, Jukamouskis, He'd banged them in for us. He was a great guy to come on after 60 minutes, but he was getting unsettled because he wasn't getting game time. He just sold them. You know, Juranovic had a great World Cup. I thought he was a bit big-headed. He sold him, I know, 10 million we got for him. 12 million. Yeah. And then he bought in that wee Alistair Johnson from Canada. He's somebody that he might take with you. He's a great player. Ex-ice ice hockey player. He's hard as nails. And he's up and down that wing for fun. <laughs> Craig, can I come to you and ask you your thoughts and opinions on uh, the appointment today? Yeah, as we, me and Ellie were talking about it. And do you know what? I mean, I've, as I've said on it before, I was 50-50 about how I feel about him. But now I've <coughs> kind of um, taken my snobbery out of it, if you like, and actually researched the, the guy and bothered to do research about the guy. I'm really quite excited what he can bring. You know, putting aside who I wanted originally, obviously Potch and, and um, Nagelsmann. And it seemed like this is the club's fourth or fifth choice. I know he was on the list, but he was way down it and he was certainly way down on mine. But having researched the guy, having watched stuff about him, having, having done my research, spoken to Ali at length, <coughs> I'm actually really excited about having this guy. He seems to be exactly what we need. Um, yeah. We've tried glamour appointments and that clearly hasn't worked. So, I am 100% behind this guy now. I have to say, I've kind of done a full 180 on him. And I think uh, everything I've heard about him, I think, yeah, do you know what? I can get behind this guy. It seems like he doesn't take any crap off anyone. And it's like me, like Ali, we were talking earlier when we were saying about the snobbery of, uh, of fans and us Spurs fans thinking we're entitled to have a big name. I think we've all kind of been through that before. But I think he's going to be the right fit is what you said Ali isn't it it's, it's you think you think he's a good fit for Spurs don't you is what you I said do, to I, me I, I think that Spurs have that tradition like Celtic on how they play the football and their fans expect that level of excitement you know you've got other teams like Chelsea that are happy to defend and win titles you know Rangers are like that Celtic will never like that you know and, and some seasons we won't win the league because you can't always win all the time you know, we lost the league to Rangers sometimes, but we batter them in games and get beat 1-0. You know, so, but I'll give you a, st a couple of stats here. So Celtic played Real Madrid last season uh, in the Champions League, you know, and we had 35% possession. In fact, I'll, I'll go to the Barcelona match first that we won, actually, uh, if you don't mind. Hmm. Where are we? And I'll just give you an indication of the turnaround or the difference in his style when approaching big teams. He'll not care who they are. You know, whereas when we played the bigger teams in Europe under Martin O'Neill and all the rest of them, you know, it was more of a uh, it was more of a counter-attacking style. He just goes for it. So we played Barcelona and beat them 2-1. In that game, we had 16.4% possession. We had four shots, three on target, one off target. Yeah? And you got to remember it. We were about equal in possession up to 60 minutes against Real Madrid. We had 35.5% possession. Yeah. 10 shots, four on target, five off target, one block, and our passing was 86% to their 93. The guy will just go for it. It doesn't matter who you are. 
Man City comes, he's not trying to sit back. He'll be pressing right up there, mate. And when you when you watch that one, why he's perfect for Spurs, then you'll see what I mean about Son, Kane, a lot of them. He uses all the half spaces. And that's where they're, they're intelligent enough to do that. Kane will love it. And I think you'll convince Kane to stay. That's the other thing. Really? Ali, Ali Craig, Craig asked earlier what players you think would uh, do well under him. What players do you think he won't like and he will want to offload as soon as possible? Anyone that doesn't follow his instructions. What he'll do is he'll, he'll bring in two players for every position. And that player that comes into that position will fit in seamlessly because they'll do the same job. There is no different tactic. You know, he's, he's got plan A's and plan B's and stuff, but he's not he's not going to come in with a broad plan. He sees it as a simple game, and it is. You know, he'll have two players that will do your inverted right backs. He'll have a couple of strikers. He'll have, your, he'll have about four or five, maybe even six wingers because they're the ones he'll bring off after 60 minutes because they'll be knackered. You know, these guys won't stop running. And when you re- when you watch the other one that about when he was mic'd up, that was his first training session. His, his mantra at Celtic was, we never stop. I mean, you can stop after the game, but you don't stop at all. You stop at half-time, that's it. There is no stopping. You know, the ball boys are trained at Celtic Park to get that ball back in straight away. Yeah. All of them. You know, it's, everything's all fast. The amount of goals we scored against European teams and stuff, just by the fact that the ball boys were flinging them in. And they just weren't expecting it all to be turned around so quickly. You know, he'll have all the Spur, Spurs ball boys, everything like that. It's all brought into the one thing. And it's all about fast, high energy, pace, all of that. You know, some of your players that you've got will have a laugh, but others, you'll just look at them and say, they'll just, you'll try and work with them. You'll try and make them better. You know, we had a guy, Anthony Ralston. He was playing at Dundee United until Postcoggle came in. Put him in at right back. And he thought, it was like, who the fuck is this guy? Excuse my French. You know, he came in and he was he was just like a different player and he got a Scotland cap on the back of it. It was like he's turned him into a different player. Same with the left back. I always liked Greg Taylor, but the problem in Scotland, and especially Celtic, is if you've got a Scottish player, then you're shite. If you know what I mean? And it's not the case. You know, the, the, they seem to not like their own for some reason. You know, unless you're a, a Tierney or a McGregor who are outstanding players. You know, but these other boys are good, good pros. And I've always liked McGregor. I always thought you were never going to be better than Tierney at your first ask, you know, coming from Kilmarnock. But he's turned into a great wee player. Ali, I watched one of the documentaries and the goalkeeper and what the goalkeeper does during a game is extremely important to him. Yeah. Now, of course, Hugo, it, it looks heavily likely that Hugo Lloris is going to be leaving the football club this summer. Yeah. Spurs need to bring in a new number one. Yeah. Who would fit in well for Tottenham, do you think, uh, under him? The, I saw the guy that they were talking about. Anyone that's good with their feet, he'll play like a. How would you call it? It was the, the old style centre half that was always sat at the back, um, like a sweeper keeper. Sweeper keeper, basically, yeah. That's what he'll be expected to do. Half the time, it's easier than Scotland because obviously, you teams against you, especially the better teams, will still be able to counter attack at pace. But they cut so much space down in his teams that it's hard to break that press at Celtic. And if he's got better players, it'll be the same when he plays for you guys. So my only concern is that how he's going to defend it because his defence for us, because the players didn't quite understand the system, maybe got excited, I don't know, but they're too far up the pitch out of position, things like that. It took time for that to gel, you know. So, you know... If he gets a full pre-season in, you would hope that he's going to get into some of them. Some of them are just going to get it because they've probably played that style elsewhere or whatever. You'll try and bring in players. you love the money now to bring in players like that. Um, but that would be my concern is how he defends against some of the top quality teams he plays against. Because, you know, we got we got thumped. We never won any of our Champions League games last year. But <laughs> we were playing Leipzig, Real Madrid and Shakhtar Donetsk. You know, they've all got a lot more money than us. Yeah. You know, so, and I'm not saying that's an excuse because normally we'd, we'd expect to be beaten your Leipzig's and your Shakhtar Donetsk because we've done it before. So we were hopeful. That's I think the biggest thing the fans have got to that at Celtic is that we thought he would give Europe another goal was to prove himself because I don't think he's done that yet. Ali, under under Antonio Conte, the, the wing-backs were really important to his system. Mm-hmm. Uh, from what I've seen and from what I understand... Uh, Postacoglu, um, you know, it's very important again with his fullbacks. 
Do you yeah. think that the fullbacks that Spurs have got at the moment are good enough for what he wants them to do? I think they're, they're probably of a better quality than what he had at Celtic. Whether they're good enough for the English Premier League, I'm, look, he's a better manager than me. Uh, he'll have to decide that himself. If he doesn't think they are, then he'll he'll change it. Because that's they're probably one of the most important parts of his team. Mm. They really need to understand that role because that defending bit is where it can fall down. You know, if they don't understand their role and if they're not fast, and if they can't be up and down that pitch the whole time, then they've got no chance. I mean, he tends to, the, the right back tends to go out wide for some reason, uh, Alistair Johnson, whereas the left back always came inside. Um, but you would see Johnson coming inside as well. He, they try to mix it about as much as they can and confuse the opposition, you know, which is the right way to play. Do you think he will he, he will literally bring the same style of play to Tottenham as he played at Celtic? And what other what other changes do you think that he may have to make because it is the Premier League? I'd love to speak to the man and say, look, mate, you're going to need to be a bit more conservative. But he just won't be. <laughs> you know, his, his whole thing is, is that, you know, I've used this style of football in every country I've went to. And I win. Why would I go to another yep. country and with better players, not do the same thing. And then, how gutted am I going to be? I mean, look, a good season for you guys next year, in my opinion, would probably be to come above Chelsea and Pochettino. And I think you'll do that. So That shouldn't be too hard. They're mid-table team. Well, that's <laughs> now, but, you know, Porsche will come in and sort some of that out, but they're, they're a basket case at the minute, mate. Uh and they've had a serious hit this year, and some of the players they've brought in don't understand the league. You know yourself, not every player that comes in and gets bought in the English Premiership can handle the pace. Whereas yeah. at least in Scotland, you know, he'll understand the type of players he needs. The Japanese are all fast. You know, you see with Son, uh, Son and that as well, South Koreans, you know, you'll bring in players like that, and there'll be internationals you'll get. Whereas, you got to remember, we didn't really always get internationals, you know, because because of, of the money they cost. Um, so that's probably where I'd say you guys will be different. He'll, he'll be able to pull from a rich pot, to be honest with you. And look, he'll not need, he'll not ask, where a lot of people will say, I need 50, 80 million for these guys. If he gets guys for 20, 30 million, he'll coach them into good players. You know, if you've got any promise, he'll bring them. I was going to say that, Ellie, actually, about, about signings, actually, because it doesn't seem to me like he needs the superstars. He, he seems like the sort of guy that's actually, he's actually a football coach and, we can perhaps expect a few off-the-wall signings and perhaps players that, as Danny Rose famously said, you you have to Google them to find out who they are. But he, he's got a knack of telling the director of football who he who he wants to bring in. I mean, did he have a director of football at Celtic? I can't remember if, if he did or he didn't. Yeah, um, it's a bit kind of different at Celtic. They've got the whole team that does it, really. And I'm sure Tottenham have got the same kind of setup. Uh, what, what I will tell you is, if Levy says, we need to buy this guy, he's just going to tell him no. If he doesn't fit into the system, he's just got to say, no, fuck, no, I want the money to go on this guy. You know, and that's how it'll be. He'll not bring in anyone into the club that doesn't fit into his system, just won't be coming in. Do, do, you, do you really think that, Ali? Because last okay. last season, Fabio Prachi is our director of football and, of course, Antonio Conte as the head coach. Mm-hmm. We still had club signings in. You don't think that's going to happen under uh, Postacoglu? No, nah, because the guy you've got in now, he's ex-City uh, Group, isn't he? Who's Scott Mann. Scott Mann. Aye, so uh, this is why he's going there, is because he's he's turned around and said, this is the guy you want. I mean, they'll be giving him exactly what he needs to be successful. You know, this guy's come in with the City group, the way they style of play, they play. Look, there's a bigger thing going on here than just Anne's post the You know, Levy's been fucking really smart here, to be honest with you. I know he's a, a bit of a wily operator, but I think he's basically looked at it and thought, you know, I can't do this myself. You know, and, and it's not succeeded for how many years? Right, let's bring in people that know what they're doing. It's a bit like Wrexham, you know, they brought in people that know what it took to win that league. You know, and it's the same with you guys now. You need to just bring in someone that knows how to bring in a team and put it together. And this guy does. You know, and they've got to trust him because at the end of the day, it's his job at the end of the line. He'll not, if if they start telling him that he can't buy players that'll fit into it, he'll be raging and you'll know. Just wait for him, his first media conversation, when someone asks him a stupid question, he'll just say, listen, mate, that's not even on my radar. That's it. He just shuts them down. He's brilliant. 
Ali, there seems to be so many positive things to say about Postacoglu. What are the yeah. negatives? There's jumper. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, pretty much. He, he wore a wheelie jump. Look, I, I've, I've said the defence, really. I'm not so sure that he can put a team in that league, but I'm not sure anyone can. You know, you know, Man City leak goals. Arsenal leak goals. You know, anyone that's going to play that style of football, you're going to leak goals. It's more about scoring more. It's almost back to the Kevin Keegan days where if they get four, I'll get five. That's what he's like. You know, wow. he'll, he'll not care about losing a few goals. If you know what I mean? If he's 2 0 down, he'll still he'll still be full up front. There'll not be any of this, well, let's consolidate so don't look stupid. You know, you play the one style and that's it for 90 minutes. You just don't stop. And he's uncomfortable. Do you expect him to have a good start in the Premier League? I think his start might be the hardest part. But I think he'll have a strong finish. I think his second season, like I say, I think he'll push for top four because I think you're already good enough to do that. And I think he's a good enough coach to get you there. Because mm. you weren't that far off this year. You just tailed off because you had too much pissing about with managers. Uh, so you've obviously got great stadium. Fan base is noisier than most. Uh he loves all that. He'll do a lot of the shaking of the fist, beating of the chest. Um, and, yeah, I, I think I, I'd be comfortably happy to say there's very few managers out there that suits Spurs as much as he does. You you, you mentioned that. Um, what I noticed about him is he's really, really passionate and the fans seem to absolutely love and yeah. adore the guy. Uh, Spurs fans haven't really felt that connection since Pochettino left in 2019, that real connection with the manager. Um, yeah. Do you expect that to happen at Spurs very quickly? Yeah, definitely. I think the doubters will think, do you know what? Let's give him a chance. He'll get given a chance because of the style he plays, because you guys will love that style. And you'll see the players playing with a smile on their face, their tails up. You know what I mean? Having a right go. Mm. There'll be none of this tame passing. See if anyone passes the ball back. You watch him. He's no happy man. There's no point. He doesn't see the point in passing the ball backwards. That's, that's my uh, Harry Harry Winks question out the window then. I'll just scrub that one out. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, Craig, that, that is music to our ears, isn't it? Because the amount of time yeah. we've, we've been on podcasts and saying about uh, Spurs not moving the ball quick enough and it always, always seems to be slow. All the documentaries that I've watched on Postacoglu, it is all about fast moving. Move that ball quickly. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. I said, they are two uh, things I told you on YouTube. It's what he does on them. He, he does, the training session is like, move the ball, move the ball, move the ball, fast, precise. I mean, we don't stop. That's yeah, it. I... I I, I tell you what, Ali, I, I'm smiling. If I'm if, you, if I'm not smiling on my face now, I'm actually smiling inwardly. The more I've obviously spoke to you at great length, and and every time you say stuff I hear about him, I'm actually thinking I could I can really get behind this guy. This, I'm actually feeling really lovely excited, fellow. honestly. It, it, right. And the, the fact you said he plays the same way no matter who he's up against, mm -hmm. I think that is key because I don't know how much. Spurs games you've watched this season, Ali, or in the last few seasons, but not much me to ask. Uh, uh, no, I don't blame you. I wish I hadn't. But <laughs> you know, the, the last the last few times we've been, well, it's actually gone on for years. We go somewhere like Anfield or, or somewhere like that. Even the Emirates, we sit back, we sit back, we sit back, and you're telling us we're not going to get that anymore. It's going to be attack, 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 basically. Yeah. Yeah, mate. He's. Again, you can watch some of the games he's played in Europe, and what you got to remember, he's playing with lesser players. That's it. Like I don't deny that, uh, but he had them playing in a style and a confidence that, you know, the, it wasn't the passing that that got them beat. It was just better players, you know. So as long as people can pass the ball and and use the space, you know, intelligent players will win him football matches, hundred percent. You know, and people like Son and Kane are going to have. It's going to be like a free for all. You know, it's just, I can't see how, if both of them are still there, the the combinations that they'll put together. What they need is, it all depends who they bring in that central midfield. He might go for Rio Hattati at Celtic. Now, if you look at the old firm game, his first old firm game, which would have been, I think it was January last year, uh, he'd only just got off the plane and came in and scored two screamers against Rangers. You're always going to be a bit of a hero then <laughs> with the fans, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, you can just see the ability of a player, you know. 
he can stand on the ball. He, he he can dictate tempo. Him and McGregor played really well together. The key will be that two centre midfielders playing well together, you know, and understanding each other. And it takes time to build that, you know. But and you got to remember they're, they're trying to build that all over the pitch, so that's why it's going to take a bit of time, you know, because they'll not be used to this. No, you know, I've never seen any football like it. You know, Brendan Rodgers won three. Well, two trebles and he left halfway through the third that we won. You know, this guy's style of football is far better than that. And and he's seen as one of them, you know, future attacking coaches. You know, this is like a free-for-all, mate, to be honest with you. It's just crazy. <laughs> you know, you sit and laugh at his football sometimes when he was playing Real Madrid. You just sit there and just think, this guy's nuts. But you love <laughs> it. You know, because you think, why not? You know, Real Madrid are going to pump us anyway. Let's have a go. You know, yeah. and that's what he looks at it. You know, and the players you've got, he's, you, you know, you're going to win more. You know, you'll be winning some games like 5 0 and stuff, mate, honestly. It's just, he's just. Ali, you, Ali, you say about the central midfield there, we've got um, s- seven or eight players. I've, I've lost count how many mm. people we've got out on loan. And one of those players is our club record signing, Tongi and Dombele. Now, I don't know how much you know about Tongi. I've seen a bit of them, yeah. Do you think he would fit into the Postacoglu system and do you think he could get a tune out of him because three different managers haven't been able to? If you think of the Andre Pirlo is probably the best example I can give you. He needs somebody with that kind of brain that can, you know, stand on the ball, dictate the play. If Dombley and Dombley can do that, then yeah, he's the right guy. You know, if he can't, then he needs a Pirlo esque type player. You know, and, and maybe even you know, like Fernandez at Man United, that type of player that can, you know, maybe dictate the player like an Ericsson used to be able to do, you know, like a Modric did. You know, that type of player is pivotal to the whole system. You know, and you just need to look at Man City, that's what they use. You know, and then they use all their, their great players just to move about and they'll all swap positions so they won't want one player that's like Pirlo. They'll need a couple, you know, because one will go forward just to confuse them. You know, why would you want guys always sat in the same position. You know, he doesn't leave his guys standing about me. <laughs> you know, they're all over the place. You know? Ali, can I, can I ask, um, mm. Pochettino, Jose Mourinho, Antonio Conte, three fantastic managers. Yeah. Some people would say world-class managers. It yeah. didn't work out with them. How is it going to work out for Posta Coglu at Tottenham? Pochettino it's wasn't a winner. Good. I'd never been a winner before. And the two other managers that you mentioned were both outdated football. That's my answer. And I think I'm right. Okay. <laughs> you know, I can't argue with that really. I, I, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying Postacoglu is going to win your league, mate. But I think he's got as good a chance as them. And I'll tell you what, he'll think he can do it. And that's all that really matters. What 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 do you think will be different with him and the relationship with the chairman and the Tottenham Hotspur board? Because I go back to the point again about club signings. How is he going to have more of a say? than someone like Antonio Conte? He's got more balls, to be honest with you. You know, he's just got to turn around and say, look, you know, for my system to work, I need this. And like I say, you've got that new guy in from the City group that'll agree with it. You know, so I, I just think that the whole setup that you're putting in place is, is what it is. It's a setup. You know, a, a manager doesn't win your titles. You know, it's your backroom staff. It's, you know, your recruitment team. It's everyone. You know, and if they're not all on the same page, then you're going you're going to win very little. And maybe it's took a while for Levy to realise that. But you know, if he's going to keep working with a low budget compared to the four or five teams that are Saudi Arabian backed and stuff like that, then he's he's going to need to do something. You know, and you're going to need an off the ball mentalist like this guy to to be able to compete with these teams. You know, because you know, there's Newcastle United are going to be spending a fortune. So you've now got Newcastle. Man United yeah. will probably lose. So you've got Man United, they're going to have money. You've got Chelsea, Man City. Liverpool are probably about the same boat as you guys. You know, is he any better than Jurgen Klopp? He doesn't cry as much as he does. You know, Klopp moans about everything. You know, it's, it's all everybody else's fault. You know, so Postacoglu's not like that. You know, he, the way he'll look at it is, right, we must try harder. You know, yeah. so so to me, you need a guy that's just going to come in and not care what anybody thinks of him. You know, and that's that's what he is. He doesn't care. He'll not care what the media says, his players. He'll just say, right, this is what is happening. This is how you're doing it, and that's it. And you'll understand within weeks 
because he'll speak to the fans. He'll always be up front and centre. Yeah. No, I was going to say that. He, he, he seems to be excellent with the media, doesn't he, in the press oh, conferences? Oh, that, he's the best I've ever known. Gordon Strachan always had the witty comments, which was always quite good entertainment. Mm. This guy is just... You could probably go on YouTube and have an hour and a half's worth of media pref, press conferences with him and just yeah. sit and laugh your butt off. He just he shuts them down all the time. I mean, they were asking about the Spurs job. He says, "Look, mate, I was a joke when I first, when I first came up here, you know. And now you've you've associated me with how many clubs now in England? I've got a cup final to prepare for. People yeah. are more than saying, well, he must have known about the Spurs. Maybe he did, but he was preparing for a cup final. He was being professional. If you know what I mean, the guy doesn't do. He, he's got apparently he's got very few confidants, so very few people get into his world of thinking." But he just tells them how it is. This is how we're going to do things. And either follow him or leave. That's the way he'll be. Ali, Michael says, uh, you're a legend. Where you, where's your Celtic uh -huh. count? Uh -huh. Yeah, I've not got one. Uh, uh, the problem with Celtic is that they moan far too much, mate, about stuff that I'm just not getting into. Uh, I'd lose the plot with a Celtic channel, so would. Um, <laughs> the, the expectations, you know, you're playing Real Madrid and joke of a defence comes out and you think you know I because Ben's about rubbish is he uh, you know, or, or how dare Modric put a ball through for someone to score a goal it's just it's just mad mate uh, we we've, we know where we're at uh, what we do know is that at any given game we expect to win every game and this is what this guy will be like it's what he yeah. brings he, this guy's a winner you look at all his leagues he's been in he wins them all you know and he's he's just used to winning and that's a habit that you want to get your team into. You know, I would I would right. say he'll, he'll certainly. And another thing, see all of your cups. You'll not put any week inside out for a cup game. Never. Well, that, that is music to the ears. He's he's there won every cup. He doesn't care if yeah. it's the Premier League, the whatever it's the Carabao Cup or whatever it is you've got now, the FA Cup. You know, he'd want to beat everyone at Tiddlywinks, mate. Yeah, he's, he's that type well, of character. He just doesn't want to lose. And he'll, he'll put out the best team. Our League Cup side was always the strongest, you know, even before a Champions League game. You know, he didn't care. He, he puts out the strongest team. And you, you'll find there'll be a core that he'll rely on. And then at the 60 minutes, he'll bring some of the guys off because they'll be knackered. No, nobody can keep, keep up with his pace for 90 minutes. Ali, Matthew, are, Matthew asks here, is he the sort of guy to have bust-ups with other Premier League managers? Did you have, have, have any bust-ups whilst nah. in Glasgow? No, nah, he's an adult. <laughs> you know, he's, he, he doesn't do the bitch slapping, mate. He, he'll just laugh at them. You know, you know what I mean? Okay. He'll, he'll just he'll say, listen, mate, you know what I mean? have a seat. You know, he's quite, <laughs> a cool, he's quite a cool guy. You'll love him, honestly, mate. He's, you'll see what I mean. And I'm quite happy to come on six months later and you can tell me what you all think, but uh, he's he's just not interested. And he'll tell you that. He'll say, I'm not interested in what Jurgen Klopp's got to say. If Pep yeah. Guardiola says, yeah, he was a bit, he said something that offended me, he'd be like, that's his, that's his problem. <laughs> you know, he doesn't care. Honestly, yeah. he, he hasn't got an ego like that. You know, he's not, that's the best thing I could say about him. He's, he's a really, really humble family guy. You know? That's good uh, to know. Uh uh, Ali, I've got to say, there's a lot of love for you in the comments. You're obviously having a big impression with, with Tottenham fans. Um, somebody asked, um, we've been linked today with Harry Maguire. Now, that, that would definitely split opinion with some of the Spurs by, uh, fan base. But do you would you think Harry Maguire is his sort of defender he'd like? Or would that be somebody who'd say, nah? I can't even believe you asked that. I've got to ask it. Somebody asked me to ask it. You don't. So, uh... You don't. <laughs> Look, Harry Maguire's better than what we've got. If you know what really? I mean. So, yeah. Well, I tell you what, he might go back for Carter Vickers because he's the best defender in our league. I don't that's think he's ever since he left. When he left Tottenham, he, he's, he's the best defender that's been in Scotland since uh, Van Dijk. That's he's solid. Honestly, he is the best defender we've had since Van Dijk. And I only think Van Dyke was a good player because he had a decent player next to him. You look at whenever Spurs don't have a, a decent... One of his partners is gone. How bad is Liverpool? You know, Jason Denier made Van Dyke the player he is, I think. And Jason Denier went on to do nothing. You know, he went over to France right enough, but... You know, Jason Denier, to me, was a better defender than him when he played for Celtic. 
you know what I mean? He just looked a better player. He, he just looked to me, he was too slow, too laborious, too cocky on it all. And he's still the same now. And he, he just don't get away with that in the Premiership. So he always needs someone to back him up there. So it all depends who he wants. Harry Maguire will do a good job for someone. You know, not for Tottenham. Remember, Man United, Man United's a fucking basket. I tell you what, he's better than Eric Dyer. Yeah, yeah. I, do, I, I do not want Eric Dyer or Harry Maguire in our well, back line next season. But, but well, Harry Maguire of, and Eric Dyer. Yeah. No. Think of, think of the Harry Maguire that plays for England, though. And he plays well for England. You know, maybe that's what he needs. Uh, right, mate, come on, let's get you back up to scratch. The guy was an £80 million pound player. You know, if you get him for £20 million now, you know what I mean? That's worth it, isn't it? Craig, can I can I come to you and ask you about? Um, were you surprised that it is a four year deal for Postacoglu? Because I must say, when the announcement came out, I'm absolutely delighted myself that it is a four year deal because it means that Tottenham are really saying out loud it is a project, it is a big job. Uh, Postacoglu is here for the next few years, certainly. Um, you know, hopefully they're going to back him. But are you pleased that it is for four years? Well, I am very pleased it's for four years and, uh, you know, because the last two managers, two or three managers, if, I can't remember what Nunes was, but that was certainly two years, wasn't it? Or Conte was a year and a half. Um, it does show a bit of a flip back to the Pochettino sort of days where they see it as a project. I mean, I think when me, me and Ali were talking, I, I thought it was going to be a two-year deal when it came out that it's four. It, it is quite possibly uh, a year because... Ali wasn't it? Um, he had he was doing a year sort of rolling contract. Uh, so we're not rolling to contract. Celtic have been like that since Martin O'Neill back in the day. Uh, we've uh, up here the report that's only a two year contract with a year possible extension. Yes, four though. I thought, I'm sure it yeah. came out as okay. four, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, so. well, up here the report and different, but uh, well, I'll give an example, guys. Look, <laughs> he has chose Spurs, and I can't emphasise that enough. That's how confident this guy is. And the other thing as well, it's like guys up here were saying great plan by Celtic to give get five million compensation for Postacoglu, put Kennedy in charge for six months, and Postacoglu will be back anyway because we get the start. <laughs> uh, so we're making money for nothing, uh, and we'd still win the league. Um, but look, in all seriousness, I want him to go down there. Look, I'm a West Ham boy, believe it or not, down there. You know, well, you know that, Craig. Yeah. And I, I now want Spurs to actually win the league because I'm not partial about it. It's just. You know, they were my team because a few mates took me to the games and stuff. And I always like to say I'm a supporter of a team that I've watched play. You know, but I remember the teams was the Ardealist and the likes in. You know, and, and the, the style that they played is, is what you'll get back. You know, he's he's just not going to compromise on that. I, I don't care what anyone says, levy, you know, finances. You know, if they, if they told him that he had to take all the Celtic team and put them in the English Premiership tomorrow, he'd still play. If you know what I mean? He still play the same style. We get pumped every week, probably. Uh, not by some of the teams, but certainly the top teams. But you know, he's just going to have better players with you, and he won't compromise on that. It doesn't matter what who they bring in; they'll play his way, and that's it. Craig, have so he you, have you, I'm going to say, Craig, have you have ever known uh, fans to be disappointed in a managerial appointment, and then within the matter of like 24, 48 hours, everyone changing their mind because the research they have done on the head coach because the amount of messages I've received from Spurs fans in the last couple of days saying, oh, this appointment is going to be terrible. I can't believe that Spurs have appointed an unknown name, hasn't managed in the uh, Europe's top five leagues, blah, 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 blah. And most of those people now today have come back to me and said, yep, I've got it completely wrong. I'm really, really excited about this appointment. Are you surprised by that? I'm not because I went through those same things myself and, you know, shame on me for, for dissing this guy and, and, not looking into him, which which is which is my bad, and and having done my research like all the other fans and spoken to people like Ali, as I say, I'm genuinely excited that this guy is going to get get us back to playing the football that that we also crave and have been missing for the last four years since since Mourinho came in. Um, <coughs> as I say, it was a bit arrogant. I I, I put myself in that category that. You feel a bit entitled as Tottenham fans sometimes, which is which is not a good trait. That we need a name, we need a a Mourinho or a Conte. And do you know what? Sometimes the managers that you least expect and the ones you've least heard of, like your Martin Yowles, um, are the ones that actually do better than the the managers that come with with all the results and all the and all the trophies. So, and but Postecoglou kind of comes with all the trophies yet. 
he's not a big name manager. And I think that's what we need. And I think from everything I've read, everything I've listened to about the man himself, I, I, I just think, I just think he, he's exactly what we need. I like, I like him and I don't, I don't know him, but I, I know I'd like him if I met him, Ali. Do you know, do you know what I mean? It's like you've yeah. said, he, he's just a I'd top love, guy. I'd love to sit and have a beer with the man because he's just, so knowledgeable, funny, just... I'll give you an example. So, you know what the rivalry is right, like between Celtic and Rangers? Uh, he met um, Van Bronckhurst in a restaurant, and he was seen in a restaurant, and they brought it up in an interview room, asking him, you know, what, what do you think you were doing? You know, do you realise this is Glasgow? And, and he turned around and said, we're, we're human beings, mate. <laughs> That's all he said. It just shuts them down. You know, it, we're human beings. And who dare you tell me who I can and can't speak to? You know, and because he starts off like he's not shouting, you know, I came from the streets of Dublin and I'm a big Celtic fan like Brendan Rodgers did. You know, all these managers, that's why Brendan Rodgers got such a bad thing because he purported to be a Celtic fan. You know, and then fans can't understand why fans of the club would want to leave if for anywhere else, you know. And I get that, but he, he never said that. He came, you know, and did what he said he would do. I'll give you one back. Name me a club just now that either Mourinho or... Conte would go to an English Premiership that they'd win the league in with their style of football. I don't think they would. With any team, I think you could put them in Man City tomorrow, and teams would beat them because it was tight enough this year. But if they started playing their style, conservative football, teams will beat them, and that's the way the, the, the world of football is now. You know, and it's the same with Pochettino. There's, the guy's never won anything. Who's to say he's not going to go in and do what Graham Potter did at Chelsea? A lot of fans wanted him back, though, Ali. Yeah, but that's like a lot of our fans were talking about Brendan Rodgers coming back and stuff. But I don't think you should ever go back. The guy left you. I, I want to have. A bit, I want my club to have a bit more pride than that. I want them to say, um, you know, do you know what? You left. You've had your chance at our club. You know, yeah. you went away. Now you've not got. You know, wh where's he going to get a bigger job, Pochettino? So I don't think it was like that though. He he got he got sacked. He took us to a Champions League final. And I, I'm sorry for defending a now Chelsea manager, but. Um, <laughs> It's fair to say, you know, he took us to a Champions League final, didn't spend a penny in 518 days, multiple transfer windows. Yeah. And then just months later, he was sacked. A lot of people felt that that was a terrible I was, decision. I'm fair, I wasn't aware of that. That's a fair point. Uh, well, I'm not saying he's a bad manager. I'm just saying he's still never won anything. And I, and I know he got you at a European final. So, you yeah, know, that's no easy task. Uh, but, look, Europe's, Europe's a strange one. English teams... The good thing with him is that he played his own style. You know, yeah. that's why he did well in Europe. Whereas the amount of English teams or Scottish teams or other teams, I hate teams that go out and try to play the European style of football against European teams. Just go out and play what you do on a Saturday, you know, and play your own style on them. You know, that's how Celtic won the European Cup in 1967. Just had to get that one in there. <laughs> you know I mean? but, uh, and as for the question there, uh, I want the guy from Bodo Glimt. Uh, he beat us 5 1 last year in the Europa League, uh, or the the old UEFA Cup. Uh, he's the guy that I'd like to see at Celtic because I think he's the exact same. He plays that attacking football and all of that. You know, and look, we, we all want the same thing. We all want to watch our teams play nice, attractive football. You know, and we, we're not worried about Rangers. You know, they'll be busting another five years and pretend to be the same team again. It's just we're not bothered about them. You know, you look Alex. at in 2020, even before they went bust, you know, I think since 1960, if you look at how many trophies Celtic have won compared to them, it's ridiculous. Ali, been... so go on. Yeah, just 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 coming back to who you think he would. I, 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 you know, with the players we got on loan, we got Dombele, La Celso, Regulon, Roden, Wink, Spence, Jill. The, the list is endless, and and at least two of them have have gone away on loan and actually have won a trophy. I while they've been on loan. Good, so. I, I like that La Celso. La Celso. I yeah, well, a, a lot of um, a lot of Spurs fans, including me, want to see Spence given a go at right back. So that that'll be interesting what he does. But Postacoglu, see, there was uh, somebody up here mentioned that. Somebody up here Sorry? mentioned that boy Spence. I don't know the boy Spence, but somebody mentioned him. He got a, was he not playing just recently? He he um he was he, we, he was he well he was a club signing and Conte clearly didn't want him and he didn't really <laughs> use him. So he went on loan in January to to uh, to Wren and um, he was doing okay, but got injured toward the end of the season. So he's he's back now. So that will be interesting to see if he gives you for chance. And leading on from that, 
are we going to see more of our academy boys get given a chance is under Postacoglu? Because obviously under Conte, certainly Conte and a bit bit for Marino, we haven't seen many of the academy boys coming through and people, people ultimately uh, have been leaving. So are we going to see that? He'll bring, I think he'll bring the young boys into the squad, uh, into the squad training. Uh, look, your academy and everything now will start playing that style of football. All the coaches will all be briefed. Everyone from the whole of Spurs will play the same way. We won the we won all the under eighteens, the the other leagues up here. Won the women's league, or won a couple of cups in the women's, which is the first time that we've done that. Uh, you know, the the whole club will be run the same way. If you know what I mean, because they, they've got to play the same style. Because if they're expected to play in the first team, he'll expect them to know the style. And that's it. They'll, they'll just be like robots, mate. They've got their job to do, and that's it. Every one of them. There'll be no doubts. And the good thing is with that is that there's no doubt in what they, they don't need instructions before they go in the park. You know, they're all drilled that well. You know, the organisation that he puts into it is just second to none, mate. You know, I mean, you see how detailed Pep gets with it. You know, this guy's the same. Ali, how how, um, how much did Postacoglu um, use the youth team um, at Celtic for the last two years? Did they did, did, a, did a lot of the younger players get opportunities in league competition and cups? Yeah, so the first season, Welsh was a centre-half for us. He was 19, and they played him with Carter Vickers. Uh, I think uh, Starfelt was out for about six months. Um, you had uh, Ralston, he's a youth graduate. Uh he was out on loan at Dundee United and I don't know who he brought back or, or what he gave him, but he, he was like a different player, mate. And I mean, he was like a, a centre mid. <laughs> he was passing them on, you know, and scoring goals in the last minute and stuff. And you're thinking, you're a right back, mate. What are you doing? You know, and it's, it, he'll, he'll get every player and he'll put them in and it'll no matter who you are. If you're the right player to play on that pitch, you'll be playing. That's it. That's how he plays it. And he gives them all a chance. He'll tell he'll tell you one of his his chats that he'll have with you fans is every one of my players knows that at some point they'll get a chance to play and prove themselves. And then it's up to them. He doesn't it's not about, you know, yeah, you're the best player for the job. You prove yourself and do a job for us, then you'll be playing. Simple as. Ali, is Postacog glue the sort of guy and the sort of head coach to, to put arm round players? Yeah. He's also the type to come down on players as well if they don't do the right thing. You know, yep. he's, he's, an, he's an all-round man-manager. You know, there's not a player that I know of at Celtic, even the ones that have went away, that have a bad word to say about the man because he made them all better players. Yep. Now, look, I, think, I think he'll find improvement in the likes of Harry Kane and stuff because he'll yep. give... He'll, he'll get the team to play for them all, if you understand what I mean. So he'll, he'll get the team to play for Harry Kane's benefits. You know, and the style of play he plays will benefit Harry Kane, one hundred percent. Yeah. Well, the Celtic chief executive Michael Nicholson said today it's been a pleasure working with Ange, uh, a great football manager and a good man. He served the club with such energy and determination. The chairman Peter Lawwell said Ange delivered a fantastic level of success to Celtic. Captain Callum McGregor said it's been great to work with the gaffer over the past two seasons and to achieve the success we have. Potter Coglu came out and said today Celtic wanted me to extend my time at Celtic. And while I am so respectful and understanding of their position, a new opportunity has been presented to me and it is one that I wanted to explore. It has been an honour to be uh, asked to be Celtic manager and during my two years, I've given everything I have to deliver success to our supporters. Ali, be honest with me. After um, the treble was completed, mm -hmm. did a lot of Celtic fans, were, were, were you all expecting him to leave or to yeah. stay? No, I'll leave it. As soon as... He did a. He was hugging people on the pitch, uh, not making it obvious, but yeah, uh, he enjoyed that moment. He enjoys winning, you know. So he's the type of manager that he shut everything off and said, "This is about the final," uh, and he concentrated on that final. And I'm sure that's what he told Levy. He says, "Look, I don't want anyone coming out about this." You know, there was obviously speculation. Uh, look, when Spurs came in, even Chris Sutton said, "Look, you know." Most of us looked at it and thought if that had been a Leicester or an Everton or something like that, he'd have probably stayed another season. Yeah. You know, 
because if he did well in Europe, he'd get a better opportunity. You know, there was talk that he'd maybe stay because he's a Liverpool fan, apparently, uh, and he's maybe going to get Klopp's job when he leaves. Um, that's how highly thought of he is through the coaching world, I think. So, I don't know, mate. I, I knew he was going as soon as it came out, to be honest with you. The, the fact that he didn't deny it straight away, you know when a manager doesn't deny it. Ali, a lot of Spurs fans will say that Jose Mourinho and managers like Antonio Conte, it was like that they were doing Tottenham Hotspur a favour. But and Postacoglu, he really wants this opportunity. He, he's going to grab it, isn't he? 100%. He, he's, he's, like I said to you, he's going to want to prove this to pretty much the world, mate. He, he's going to want... He's going to want to do a job for all the coaches that he's worked with in Australia, Japan, even Scotland. You know, it'll raise the profile of Scotland that if a manager goes down there and does a great job, then all the conversation about you can't get a manager out of Scotland to win things. You know, mm -hmm. so it's more to me that, look, all I can say is that the guy's a winner and he's there to win. And he's not going down there thinking that that's not possible. Yeah. If it had been another club, he might have thought, nah. Don't fancy that, you know, because he's not going to want to play in a league where he's sixth, seventh, or eighth. It's as simple as that. You know, it's a hard league, so there's only maybe six or seven clubs you'd have probably went to. You know, so right. and you're one of them. Craig, how big do you think this job is for him? I, th I think the fact that he's he's like you said there, he, he's chosen us. He, he clearly wants to be at Spurs, but I, th I think he sees it as a dare I say a bigger job than Celtic Ali because you you know you you're you're one of the two best teams in Scotland whereas we're not one of the two best teams in in England so I think he's not in under no illusions that he won't he won't see the club, tough game he won't see the club part of it as the challenge the league will be his challenge because it's a more competitive league if you know what I mean uh, but the thing, fact, the, the thing is though Ali we, we, with, with the board, it's very important to get European football. That's why, yeah. um, you know, for us not to get European football this season um, is terrible, in my opinion, um, for, for lots of reasons. Um, but not one manager has won a trophy at Spurs in the last 15 years. Now, if a manager comes in or, or a head coach comes in and puts a trophy in the cabinet for Tottenham, they will go down as a legend. So you've, you've said to me earlier that he will take these competitions seriously. Yes. What do you think the priority is for him personally and the football club? Is it to get back into Europe or is it to put a trophy in the cabinet? Because all of us, we all want to see players like Harry Kane lift a trophy because we have had so many good players, good managers uh, that we've all mentioned over the years and they've all ended up leaving without winning a trophy at Tottenham. And as Craig rightly said, you know, Undombele goes off, wins a Serie A title. Um, Brian Hill goes off on loan, wins a Europa League. The amount of Spurs players that have gone off and mm -hmm. won trophies. It is unbelievable. Yeah, look, he it's hard to say what he's going to prioritise. He'll prioritise the next game and he'll tell you that. He's there to win all the trophies. That that's all I can tell you about the man. That's the way he thinks. He's yeah. he's coming there to win everything that he plays in. And the next game is the only game he will focus on. Mm -hmm. He'll not talk about leagues, he'll not talk about cups, he'll not talk about semi finals if he's in the quarters. He's no interested. Next game, that's it. Play game by how game, you... all the players are told the same. That's pretty much how he'll do it. He's just going to... Look, I reckon... <laughs> See if he doesn't win you a trophy in three years. I'll give you £100 for charity. And I'm Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you that. Do you, do you think he is going to be successful at Tottenham? And when I say successful, I, I mean put a trophy in the cabinet. Do you? Do you? Can you see that? I wrote down, if I can find my notes, season one, I think you'll look to get in the top four and above Chelsea. I thought I'd just put that in for you guys. Yeah, thanks, Ali. Yeah. Season two, I reckon you'll want to get a trophy in top four. And season three, I think you'll want to be champion. Wow. That league. And that's what I've written down. Right? Well, we'll certainly go <laughs> along with that. That's what he'll... That, that's, I was trying to think, what will he be thinking going into that job? And that's what he'll be thinking. Give me a couple of years and I'll have a team that will win that league. I hope they give him the time, though. That, that, that's the thing. But, that's Ali, what's the... What's the, the um, what, 
Sorry, mate, go on. You'll get the time if he gets the resources. Yeah. If you're getting the players he wants, yeah. then you'll get the time because you'll just win games of football. Ali, what's the what's the key if you could give Spurs fans a key message about Postacoglu, what, what what would it be? Give him time, give him patience, give him the tools to do the job and he'll come good. Is that is that the long and short of it? Believe in the guy. That's what I would say. Uh none of us did. It didn't take long. And I think he'll look, he'll he'll gain your belief, I believe. He did that was. Uh but I would say if you believe and back him, then I think it's, it'll be a successful partnership because you've got a great fan base. Uh, don't tell Mark I said that, by the way. Um, He's probably watching. Mark's watching. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Take that back, Mark. Uh, yeah, it, it, look, you're going to have... To me, he's going to... He'll, he'll just galvanise the place is the best word to have. You guys are down in the dumps and now you've had crap managers playing strike football. And what are you going to get now? You're going to get a guy coming through the door who's great with the media... He's great with the fans. He's going to play attacking football. I mean, I don't know what more you want. You know, uh, you know, you're not going to get the doer Conte arguing with everyone, and and the same with uh, Mourinho. You know, with their attitudes. You know, like we've won big titles and trophies, so we're above this. You know, he's not going to come in with that. You know, so. And the only negative then, Ali, is the jumpers. He, he wore this jumper, right? And uh, all the Celtic fans started wearing his jumper about town. Uh, <laughs> he loved it. Uh, the, the Green Brigade is out like our uh, ultras, if you want to call them that. Uh, and they do all the tifos and make all the noise at Celtic Park. And yeah, they all turned up to one game wearing the jumpers. Uh, and he loved it. you know. And f- because of that, he started. He wore it for the rest of the season, uh, the, the, the jumpers that he wears. So... But uh, no, I'd say I'm more concerns about the defensive side, mate, because he's going to play attacking football. But like I've explained to you, there's nothing you can do about the defensive side if you want to play that style. You know, it doesn't matter what manager comes in, Pep can't do it. You know, Arteta isn't doing it at Arsenal. You know, you're going to leave yourself open at the back, and it's all what you do up front. And if you're prepared to take that risk, that's that's what your sell off is, effectively, for getting good attractive football, is that you're going to concede goals. You know, Newcastle did it in the day. You know, teams like that always did it. Anyone that's tried to be an attacking team will always lose goals. You know? Ali, do you think that uh, Postacoglu will be backed um, in the right way that he wants to be? Because I think that it would be absolutely perfect and ideal. Uh, You know, Tottenham Hotspur have obviously put this announcement out today, a four-year deal for him at the football club. Wouldn't it be nice now that Spurs give him like a statement signing, a real great signing that every single Spurs fan can get excited about? Yeah, I think they have to. Uh, look, I, I don't think he's going to turn around and say, and Levy's not daft either, he's not going to turn around and say, go and waste 90 million on some idiot from Sporting Lisbon, you know, that has done nothing in that type of league. He's just not going to do it. You know, you'll go to Japan and get one for 20 million. But it's just as good. You know, so what I'm saying is that I can't think of a bad signing he made at Celtic for the level of football we play. Mm-hmm. I would imagine it'll be the same. He'll know what level he needs to bring in. He's not stupid. You know, he's going to bring in people that he thinks that can play at that level and in his style that are good enough to win that league. He's not going to bring anyone in to, you know, do anything else. I mean, his first season is going to be consolidation. You know, get a team together. You know, and if they do it quickly, then you're going to have a great season next season. But... I don't think there's any manager could come into Tottenham just now and predict how well they would do, no matter what their background is. You know, so I would say, yeah, just believe in the guy. I think he'll he'll bring in good signings. He'll not waste loads of your money, and certainly if you've got great players, he'll not be sending folk out on loan. He'll be selling them. You know what I mean? He's just got to say, you want to leave me? Just go. You know, I'll get someone else. You know, he wants people that want to be there, and that's a good attitude to have. Do you know what, Craig? I'm picturing opening day of the season, Spurs v Chelsea at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Postacoglu against Pochettino. What, what sort of reception do you think Pochettino is going to get? Oh, God. There'll be, there'll, be a, there'll be a section of the fan base that would refuse to boo him, I'm sure. I'm not yeah. sure he's going to get universally booed because he did take us to places that, that, that we could... We felt like it was in dreamland some of the time, but 
you know, let's face it. I mean, it does feel like you've been cheated on a little bit. But to be honest, I'm now now I'll, now we've got the manager in, and now I've I'm getting genuinely excited about Poster Coglu. I've kind of forgotten Potch a bit. You know, Potch is the past. It's like getting rid of rid of an ex and then mourning mourning the fact you're not with her anymore. And I've kind of like okay. He's gone on to another project. He's at Chelsea. Don't really care about Chelsea. So I don't really care about Potts much anymore at the moment. I'm trying to concentrate on our new manager and everything I'm hearing. And I'll tell you what, Ali, I'll say it again. There's a lot of love for you in the comments. I'll tell you, I think the Spurs fans have taken on this channel, have taken you to their hearts. And I no, think they want you back I, I on I'm, more. So I'm, I've been brought up in the culture of Glasgow Celtic. And I think I'm pretty educated when it comes to football. And I'm, I'm also not unbiased if I, I think something's wrong or not. Um, and if I was, if you were asking me for opinions, I think he's a better manager than Pochettino. That was going to be my next question. Yeah, I think he's a better manager. I think he's a better man manager. I think he's, you know, I think if he'd have went to PSG, he'd have won more. Uh, you know, give that man resources. That's the only question you've got to ask. Can he go into a club with that kind of resources and that level of competition and do the same job as he's done everywhere else? But he's been a coach 27 years and won everywhere he's been. You know, yeah. So uh, at the end of the day, who you, you've got to give him that respect as much as anything else. You know, the guy isn't some young guy that doesn't understand the game. You know, uh, he's he plays attractive football. He's he's going to go in full steam ahead, and your your players will honestly. It'll be like wow, it's like it's a shock to the system. Some of it. Is he he's not scared to make changes, Ali? Is that right? Like, if the game's not going well, would he change it in the first half? Because that frustrated Spurs fans that Conte didn't change the game. You know, he normally changes the game a bit about the 60-minute mark. Uh, he'll normally bring on two or three subs at the same time. But that's normally like for like. So he doesn't necessarily change much of the shape. I think that was maybe one of the arguments that he, people had at Celtic. But I'm not funny, mate. He played 112 games and lost 18. You know, I'll take that. I'll take that ratio. Jesus. Well, you're not probably going to get that in the Premiership, and I don't think he expects that. But I, I just do think that he's going to win more than he look. Look, he'll win more points than he got this year. You know, because of the style of play. I mean, I think a guy that's, you know, Deserby did a good job for Brighton, for instance. But you know, it's because of their setup. You know, he's going to bring a setup that's based on Man City principles with, in a way, him, him getting to do that at Celtic in the British game. It's like, this was like an audition at Celtic to go down to Premiership and be able to show and get ready for doing it down there. You know, he's aware of the, the teams he's up against and else, but he, he also knows he's going to have quality players himself. You know, obviously losing Kane would be a big blow to you guys, but if they, if they lose Kane, then they need to reinvest all of that money, you know, and, and, and somebody that he thinks is going to be good enough. You know, Ali, Ali, what was the what was the feeling like amongst the Celtic fans when he was first appointed? And you said earlier that he lost, you know, a fair few of his opening games. What was yeah. it like then? Because if if fans saw that signing as a laughable one and an underwhelming appointment at the time, when mm. when you know what I'm trying to get at is if if he came into Spurs and the first few Premier League games the results didn't go our way, yeah. and the haters and the uh, the people being you know, pessimistic about this appointment. Yeah. What was the feeling like then? I think because he got us, he did that again. When you when you look at the one about uh, Ange Postecoglou mic'd up, I think that almost got all the fans on board straight away because we got excited, like you guys just now. I'm telling you about this utopia of nice, attractive football. We are going to win every game. I mean, that's not going to be the case, obviously, but that's going to be in his head, and that's exactly what he brings. So, uh, so I think to me, he's for us. We we just believed what the guy was telling us because he's so fucking convincing, and 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 the style was good enough. It was just we weren't putting the ball in the back net. I mean, that was funny. I just told you there about against Real Madrid. I mean, the only reason we didn't win our games in in Europe is because we didn't have Harry Kane. If you know what I mean, we didn't have a player like him. You know, or, or a Benzema or, you know, these top of the range strikers that are 70, 80 million upwards. You know, you've got them in your team. Then if you play his style of football, you're going to score goals. What was, you know, 
we're, we've got guys that are learning a new style as such, you know, and trying to fit into that. And then you're coming up against teams that dominate the ball. It's as simple as that. I mean, we were unlucky in that league because the league we ended up in was a harder league. But, you know, I mean, Rangers won a European Cup and, and you know, they, they lost every game. Worst record in European football. You know, because yeah. they got beaten every game with something like 21 goal difference, which we were happy about, obviously. But I, I'm not really happy about the fact that then we lose. You know, I, I've always believed that I, I'd love Rangers to do well in Europe and every Scottish team because it gives us the coefficient points. It gives us guaranteed entry, like we do just now. You know, so I can, I, I'd love Rangers to win every game and then get pumped in the final 25 0. Uh, you know, because then we get all the coefficient points that we need. You know, so. That's my kind of outlook on that. But I think he'll bring... I, th I think the first three or four months will be hard, eh? Because he's got to get but, them to understand the style. He's got to get them to believe in it. And he's going to have to get them to work. Because there'll yeah. be some of them that are pampered. You know, and some of them mm -hmm. I think they've got a voice. You know, and he's just going to get them told. You know, they'll not they'll not last two minutes with him. He'll just say, well, if you don't like it, sit over there. You know, you'll bring a young boy in just to prove a point. You know, because they've all got, you'll get them understanding very quickly. This is how Spurs play football. This is how we're playing this season. This is how we're going to win trophies. This is how we're going to do this. You know, he's, he's all positive. It's all good mm -hmm. calm. So, yeah. I just think that he's the best manager we've had. And I include Martin O'Neill in that. Yeah. And he took us to the European final. But then I, again, I, love the, I love the fact that there, there is positivity around Tottenham Hotspur at the moment because I tell you, Ali, um, I don't know how much you follow Spurs, uh, but the negativity this season has just been at an all-time low um, in every respect. Craig, what do you think the minimum requirement is for him for next season? Oh, I, no, I wouldn't. I'd love to come on here and say... He's got to win us a trophy, but I don't think you can say that. I think we've, we've gone downhill so much. I think any any progression up the table and finishing position is going to be progression. And and apart from that, I mean, I would say if you give him, if you're asking me for numbers, I'd say top six is going to be better than this year, isn't it? But I think the main thing is to see the project working, see the type of football he wants to play. If Spurs fans, and I include myself in that, if you can see that progression. You can see what he's trying to get across. You can see the plan he's got. You can see the way he wants to play. I think most of the fan base will get behind that because that's what happened with Pochettino and from talking to Ali, that's what happened with Celtic, wasn't it? You, you know, all right, you, you, you won the league, but you could see the progression throughout the season. And I think it's fair to say that he, you certainly came stronger that season, his first season, didn't you, towards the end of the season once the players got it? And I think that's yeah, I mean, this season's for. been like night and day as well. You know, his defensive side and everything about the team this year has just been all positive, you know. Uh, you mm. just They just didn't look like losing the game. You know, and you remember, we, we'd only lost, I think it was, uh, was it one, two games, I think? No, we'd lost one game up until the break and then we won the league. And he just changed the team. So he's not even got that ego where he could have went for the highest ever points total that Celtic ever had. They already had the goals, but it, he could have went for that, but he didn't. He, the, the players that were backing up the rest of the squad, he gave them their opportunity because they'd won the league. You know, so it was like a pat on the back to them saying, look, guys, you guys get involved because you've sat and you've supported us. You've done all the stuff. You know, so he's not got an ego like that. So he's, he, he'll come in totally with the whole aspect. I think six, the top six is probably going to be what I would say is a reasonable request. I, I, but look, you guys were only far off fourth this year with a basket case manager. You know, this guy isn't a basket case. You know, so, you know, but I, but the problem you do have is I don't think, you know, Man United, Liverpool and teams like that are going to play as bad next year. So it all depends on yeah. who raises their game the most, you know. So, you know, and you're obviously going to have Chelsea probably playing better under Poch. So... You're going to have more competition last year. If he was there at the start of this year, then you'd have been fourth, no problem. But that's not going to happen next year, is it? Because I don't think the same teams will play as badly. So, Ali, a lot, a lot of people are asking about um, Postacoglu songs. Do you know any songs that we could start singing? Oh. <laughs> no, really. Um, no, is he... Did, 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 the, did the fans often sing about him? Not really. They, they, they kind of 
Celtic fans have got kind of got a lot, a lot of their own songs that sing like 67 minutes when one European Cup they always do the torches and stuff or the cameras uh, and put their flashlights on uh, I'll have a ask about and I'll message you Craig OK we'll see okay. what they came up with uh, I can't think of any that Posta Coglu got there was obviously different ones for different players the, the boy Jota from Portugal a lot of folk might mention him to you I don't think he's good enough for the Premiership to be honest Uh but he was he came at the same time as Carter Vickers a six million signing, which is a lot of money for us. Uh, so that goes to show you six million is a lot for us to spend on someone. We don't very really do that. Um so I would say Yeah, there's there's different songs about different ones, mate. I can't think of any about Posta Coglu. They tend to be What about um what about the potential signing of uh Fer Yahashi? Do you think he would fit in well at Tottenham? Real Hatai. Did you Sorry? say Rio Hatati? Fer Yuhashi, the, the striker. Yuhashi. I think he's a good player, mate. Uh, he's just... He's not going to s- s- score you many from outside the box, although he can. He's good with the free kicks. Um, he, he'll nip in between all the defenders with his pace, his intelligence, all of that. So you'll pay £30 million for him off Celtic now, though. I would imagine. Because he, he's been a very important sign mm-hmm. for Poster Coglu, hasn't he? I, I think he was one of the main reasons why it worked. Yeah. You know, because he, he just understood that role and he's very selfless. He doesn't stop running. Uh, but then again, neither does Maeda. Maeda, though, won't score you the goals. He's not like Son or Furuhashi where, you know, it's almost like he trips over the ball. He's going too fast. <laughs> he, honestly, he's like an energizer bunny. He just keeps running and running. You know, sometimes you'll see him right at the right back, making tackles. It just doesn't stop, and and that's why that's why he brought him because he knows he'll buy into that. So he'll know players that he can bring from Japan that already fit into your model. You know, and I would imagine they'll be better quality than what he brought to us. You know, and the players we've got, I think, could all do a job in the Premiership. Whether they'd be good enough for a top six side, I don't know. And yeah. you don't, you'll never know that until they get there. It all depends on the manager. Postacoglu would make sure he'd make Furuhashi the main striker if, if Kane leaves. But he's unlikely to use Kane and Furuhashi together. So that's why I don't think he'll take Furuhashi. Do you think Kane will, it's fair to say, if Kane, I mean, I, I personally think he's going to stay for a year anyway and see how it plays out. But do you think Kane will buy into his methods and his way of playing pretty quickly and think, is he something I can get behind? Do you think he's something that he might yeah, think, yeah, I, I was going to give this another go? Kane looked down in the dumps most of the season that I saw him playing in because he was constantly having to come back for the ball. He's never going to have to do that in this team. He'll be on the shoulder the whole time. I mean, he'll be expecting the players to, you know, saw on whoever you got on the wings central midfielders they'll just be providing him with ammunition full stop all the time you know he'll he'll get five ten chances a game and with Kane's record he'll, he'll be banging in hat tricks now you know I can't guarantee that but that's what would be in my head is that Kane's intelligent enough to to certainly play in that style because it's just about getting in front of that defender how many times have you seen Kane just slide in and put the boot in front of the defender and knock the ball in the net Mm. He's just got he's got that level of intelligence that he can do it, and that's the type of balls you'll be getting, and that's the type of balls that Post Cog will be wanting to put into the box. You know, they'll be none of this lump it up over over high and stuff like that. You know, there'll be the odd ones that they'll put up in there that you know that, that'll be precision for his header. But when it's all at pace, there's no point in doing that really. It's very hard to do. So you'll what they'll do is they'll they'll make him make his runs. And he'll know what run to make, and there'll be intelligent enough people. Son will know where to make a pass. I mean, how many assists do they two do for each other as it is? You know, they'll both love it. You know, and I think with Kane, he'll know that, you know, straight away. You know? Ali, I think it's very fair to say that Richarlison, who cost us a lot of money last summer from Everton, yeah. has struggled in the Premier League for us. Of course, he's had injuries. <laughs> uh, he's only scored one Premier League goal all season. How can Postacoglu get the best out of him? I think he's a good player, and I think that I think he can play in Postecoglou style of football. 
because it's close control, passing, uh, range of passing, strength, you know, pace, everything that he's got that just suits the style. He, he could easily play, you know, he'll he'll be one of your your two ranging midfielders rather than the two pivots. That's what I would think if he's going to play him. Because Matt O'Reilly, if you've seen him play, he's a decent player. And David Turnbull. And they got game time in Selic. He's a massive upgrade on both of them. You know, yeah. and, and, and he'll get the ball. You know, all the ball comes through the middle and out to the wings. It's all just fast, but it's all moving. All moving parts all the time. Mm. And he's probably good enough for that. He'll be used to that type of style with uh, Brazil. He's from, isn't it? So yeah. he'll be used to all that kind of stuff. That'll be what he grew up with. You know, that close control and everything. So, yeah, and it'll be a case of get it, move it, get it, move it. You know, there's no point in keeping the ball. You'll not see guys dribbling past loads of players. There'll be no need for it. You know, you'll get the odd times where the guys will go out in the wing and they'll do it, but most of the time it's just going to be mental. Aye, how long do you think? Uh, how long do you think you'll be a manager for? Ken, uh, how long's a piece of string? He's if he gets backed and he gets his good season in the first, I think he could be with you for a wee while. Eh? You know yourself, he wins your trophy. You know. He'll see coming to you an easier task than what he did at Selic. Well. <laughs> my, well he'll look at it and say, I just need to win a trophy for them and they'll love me. You know, Celtic, yeah. you've got to win trebles now for them to love you. You know, we're, we're so used to success. You know, so it's, it's kind of hard to come to Celtic and be a success because, you know, we've only lost one trophy in the last, what was it, five campaigns? You know, so, you know, we've got four trebles in five campaigns. You know, so it's kind of mental. Craig, do you think the um, the criticism of Postacoglu's career is quite unfair? Because everywhere he has gone, he has delivered. He has won a trophy. He has been successful. This is the big break that he needs, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it is. And and yeah, yeah, you know, I included myself in that previously. I'd almost dismissive of you know Japan and what he'd done with Australia, and 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 then obviously he was at Celtic, so. Look, like speaking to Ali again, I, I, it's really opened my eyes to think, you know, it wasn't a given that he was going to win. All right, Celtic, you're expected to win something. Celtic are, are a good good team. But, you know, when he was in Japan, he, it wasn't a given that he was going to win something, but he's, he's won everywhere he's been. And winning is winning. It's like Ali said, winning is winning. And winning breeds confidence. And he's obviously a very confident guy. He believes in his own ability and he believes in his own ethos. And he seems like a guy that wants to do it his way. And if you don't buy into it, then you're out the door. I don't care who you are. And I think I think our players need that. I, th yeah. I, I genuinely think they do. And, and the fact that he's going to probably look at everybody, but if he, he doesn't like what he sees then he's just going to bomb him out. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll come back to Ndombele, um, Ali. Uh, he, obviously, our record signing, most of the fan base was excited when we signed him. He, he was a, You can see there's a player in there, but he just hasn't done it. I mean, you know, he's just won the league with Napoli, but he, he wasn't exactly <coughs> playing 90 minutes each week and a pivotal member of the squad. Mm -hmm. And do you think he's Postacoglu, the the manager to finally get a tune out of Tangi and Dombele. Will he give him a chance? I know you said he will look at all the players coming back from loan, but do you think, I mean, how long is he going to give these players, Ali? Do you think he will know within a month what, what, what he wants to do and how his squad's going to shape up? Yeah, can, I, can, I just, can I just say that um, he takes the job officially on the 1st of July and then we go on pre-season middle of July. So he's going to have two weeks to look at these players in training. So I tweeted out earlier saying it's going to be very interesting, same as Antonio Conte last year, it's going to be very interesting to see what players don't get on the plane. Uh, so he's going to make, you know, early assessments, I would I would have thought, in those first two weeks. Yeah, look, he's going to see everything that he comes and does at your club as a challenge. And things like making Ndombele your record signing play well will be one of those. Now, if he thinks he can get a tune out of him, he'll put everything in to get a tune out of him. If you know what I mean? And his coaches. You know, so he's going to look at, you know, where other people have failed. He'll make a success of that little thing. 
and people will look at it. And that's where he'll see that as, from your guys' point of view, he'll see it from the point of, if I can make Ndombele play in the first four games and play well, Spurs fans are going to go, wow, we've finally got that player. And then that's going to breed confidence through everyone, you know, mm. because it shows that he's done something other managers couldn't do. And that's what he likes to do. So it'll all be dependent on, you know, he'll, he'll look the guy in the eyes, mate, and he'll just decide if he's got it or not. You know, for all we know, that the guy's just, you know, some players just lose it at a certain stage. Look at Lukaku. You know, he can play some places, but he can't others because if he's told to run, he doesn't like it. You know, if he's that type of player where he can't take instruction, Costa Coglu's just got to say, look, mate, you're not coachable. And that might be the case with him. You know, he might be a great player, but if he's not coachable and he can't play in a system, then he's no use to you. So you'll just get rid of him. You know, that, Ali, that I've, absolutely, I've, I've absolutely love what you, you've been saying about entertaining football all the time. And he always sticks to that principle of entertaining football and attacking football. Mm -hmm. Is there ever a time where he parks the bus or, or, or shuts, shuts up shop? Never. If he was going to do that, it would have been against Real Madrid. And we didn't. You know, and to be fair, everyone thought we were going to win that game. First 60 minutes, we were outstanding. You know? And then, to be not, fair, not, they, not, they just, not, that I want, not that I want negative, so I just want a little bit of balance. You, you, you're telling me the only thing wrong with this guy is his jumpers. <laughs> Honestly, you, well, all I can say is, like, well, I'd say the only negative thing is that playing that style of football, you're going to lose goals. So you need to have a strong defence. Yeah. And... But he'll not go back from playing attacking football. Everybody on the front foot. Everyone. And and all attacking play will have to go from there. You know, it'll, yeah. be, fast, it'll be fast moving. And I, I'm looking forward to watching it myself because he's going to be doing what he did at Celtic with better players. And it'll be interesting to see how he makes that work and whether they buy into it. Because they might just not buy into it because they don't like working hard. You know? Yeah. Craig, do you have any more questions for Ali? I, no, because I, th I think he's he's covered it off so well, and I, I I'm genuinely excited. I think I might have to go for a run to calm myself down, actually. Because <laughs> gen genuinely, uh, no, I won't go for a run. <laughs> it's too much hard work. But yeah, it's 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 so refreshing to think that we're going to be getting a manager that's going to finally be playing the football that we all want. And the fact that if there's players there yeah. that can't do it, he's just going to get the ones in that can. I think, like I said to Ali earlier, the player I love at the moment is Mitoma from Brighton. I'm not sure you could you could get him, but I think he would work in a, in a Postacoglu team, players like that. So, yeah, absolutely excited. And Ali, thanks so much for um, giving us your insight. As, as I say, said a couple of times, there's a lot of love for you from the Spurs fans on this channel. So thank you very much. No problem at all. Uh, I just hope he does well for you. And I think he will look. Ali, can, I, can, can I ask you one last question? Yeah. What players or what positions are probably the most important and who do you think he will go after to be his first signing as Spurs boss? He's a centre forward. And if Kane stays, he's got that. Uh Swan and whoever plays on the wings are important. Your left and right backs need to be able to play inverted. Which, to be fair, he can coach that into players uh, if they've got a bit of versatility. He likes versatile players, so he can play in more than one position. Uh, he needs, in my opinion, from what I've seen from you guys, I know you've got Ndombele and that, there could be a reason why they couldn't be coached. He, he needs someone in there that he can trust that can be that pivot at the base of the midfield. Not not a holding midfielder type, someone that can control and dictate the play. You know, and that just needs to be someone with ability, to be honest with you. Because Pirlo, you know, he wasn't the biggest guy in the world. He wasn't a rucker or anything. He just knew how to stand on the ball. Paul Lambert used to do it. You know, he won the European Cup for Borussia Dortmund by doing that. You know, and, and they called it a holding midfielder then. They, these guys were more a pivot at the base. You know, and, and to, to a certain degree, they are there to help the defence as well. You know, so they have to be able to that ability to track back and make a tackle. So there's more to uh, that position, and that's probably the biggest position you need to fill. Is someone that can buy into that and do that and have the confidence to do it. And it needs to be someone who can strut his stuff and be confident that he can come up against your Man Cities and your De Bruyne's and that and take them on. Yeah. You know, you need a player that can come and have the impact that Fernandez had at Man United when he first came in. You know, he had a, he, he had a really good first six months. You need a player like that. And if yeah. you can get that, then 
a lot of the rest of it will come into place, mate. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know enough about your team to say who'd stay and who'd go. I, I don't think he'll make... I think he'll make a lot of changes this summer because he knows that his job's on the line. And if he doesn't like what he sees with some of them, they'll just be gone. You know, and he'll just say to Levy, look, you know, this is a shambles. You know, when do you want to win something? <laughs> That's what you'll say to him. You know, because <laughs> if, if you're only going to give me this, then, you know... Best case scenario this year, I'll do what I can, you know, and, and that's what you guys love to accept. If if the if the state of your players' minds are that bad, it'll be nothing to do with Postecoglou. You'll need time to change that, and it all depends mm-hmm. on how much he gets back to change it. If they, if they give him probably get rid of about ten players and bring in the same, then I think you'll get what you want, and it just takes time to gel in. That's what he had to do at Celtic, and I think that's why he's been brought in because he did yeah. that. You know, he got rid of 10, 12 players. You know, and then brought well, in. You know, we lost <laughs> probably four of our best players as well when he came in. Yeah, you know, Lodge and Edward went to Palace, things like that. I mean, going to Palace, what's all that about? But you know, that's they're getting five times the money down there, so you can understand why they go. But yeah, if he if he gets the back in, then he'll do well. But don't moan if he gets two or three signings, and he's he's just going to take two or three years to do it. Then, you know. Yeah, I've, I've said it on more than one occasion, Ali. I think that um, we need to change um, what we do as a football club because in the last four years, ever since Pochettino has gone out the door, I feel like we've gone round in circles and we need to do something different. Um, I am excited about this appointment and I hope uh, he, he hears a success at the football club and he gets the players in that he wants and they're not club signs. I think that the head coach now needs to have more of a say than previous head coaches. So hopefully we can move forward as a football club. I'd imagine, I'd imagine he'll be saying to Levy, right, what's the budget for three years? I want two thirds of that now. I need to change the culture and the whole club. You yeah. know, and that'll be, he, look, he'll be looking at other players that he can bring in. There's, there's a guy, um, you know, Raman Vega that used to play for your guys. He's a regular on here, yeah? Aye. His son is fucking amazing. Plays for Celtic Youths. He's brilliant. And I would imagine there's now a connection where he'll get pinched off of us. We've had four players taken in the last two or three years to Bayern Munich, two of them. Uh, Man United took one. Uh, Liverpool's took one. Uh, so we've had really, really good youth players coming through and they're just leaving because they're getting better opportunities for better money. And I would yeah. imagine that Vega having the connection he has with you guys will probably speak to his boy and say, look, you know, this is maybe an opportunity. Or he might see a pathway at Celtic to, to move him forward a bit because he's well liked up there. And I think he'll probably get his chance next year. He's only a young boy. But yeah. things like that, he'll he'll look into all of that. He'll want to get the infrastructure right top to bottom. You know, he'll be involved in everything, mate. It doesn't take holidays, that's what he says. You know, I'll get my holidays when I you know, when I die. <laughs> you know. Well, as, as, as Craig rightly said, uh, we're, we're all hoping as Spurs fans that he uh, introduces a lot of youth players into the system as well, because certainly in recent seasons under Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte, a number of the youth players have left, decent young players as well, because they want game time. They simply wasn't provided with the game time in the first team. Um, and a number of current players still want to leave as well. So hopefully so what, that will be turned around. There's a lot what, to do. What he said when he came into Celtic is, is that he wanted to show the whole network, that there was a pathway to the first team. Yeah. And if they're good enough, they'll play. So yeah. if there's good enough players in your setup, they'll play. If there's not, they won't. It's as simple as that. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's how he is. You know, now he'll accept a certain level of mistakes from the youth players because that's what you're going to get. But if it saves him 30 million in the transfer window that he can go and then spend that on someone else, then he's 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 definitely going to use that. You know, he's he's an intelligent guy. He'll He'll... If they're good enough, they'll play. That's all I would say. He's like old school manager, like your Bob Paisley's and all that. You know, Jock Steens, people like that. You know, if you're good enough, doesn't it matter who old you are? You know, and it's back to the old days with him. You know, the only pro- pressure he's got there is that there's a lot of pressure to win stuff with Spurs. And it's his job on the line. But mm. I think he's confident enough to to make those changes and give the players the confidence to play in a system. Because as I say, it's all the same. So... I don't think he wouldn't do that at Spurs. I think it'll surprise people because they'll say, Christ, he's bringing in some 19-year-old right back. What's all that about? And he'll tell the rest of the players, it's your job to look after him. You know, he's a young lad. 
you know, just go and do your thing. You're good enough. So, yeah, I, I think he'll play young players. I think he'll play anyone that's good enough. You know, and depending on his budget, will depend on how well you do it. I would think that you'll try and get a big budget for the first year and do like a, a whole change. And then that would be it. But it's whether, you know, Levy's got to have some balls here, mate. Uh, he, he's got to be able to turn around and say, right, you know what, I've given you a four year contract. That's the budget for four years. You spend it any time you like. You know, and if he thinks he needs to use it all in the first season, then he uses it in the first season. If you know what I mean? Because he's yeah. got he's got to actually back the manager over the period of his, his contract, in my view. And it's unlikely that these these executives will, but you know, he's got to give him some level of backing. I mean, you just said yourself, and Dumbley's out on loan and stuff like that. The amount of money he's have wasted. Mm. If you know I mean? He's got to go to them and say, look, you know, look at my track record. I don't waste money on players. I only tell you what I need. You know, and I, I think, think you'll do that quite well. That That's certainly the thing, Ali, because um, a lot of people have this thing of Spurs don't spend a lot of money in transfer windows. But they do, we yeah. spent £100 million pounds on La Celso and on Dombele. The recruitment, it's fair to say, the recruitment, you know, in recent years has been terrible. It needs to be a lot better. Do you yeah, think Costa Pogba will be really heavily involved in that? Yeah, definitely. I think I think your problem isn't just as much that you brought players in that weren't good enough. I just think they were brought into systems that they couldn't play in, or yeah. or, or they couldn't be coached, uh, or the, uh, there wasn't enough research into them. Uh, you know, this guy looks at everything. You know, if if they don't, he'll speak to them, and if they don't have, if they don't want to come to Spurs, if they're dilly dallying over Man United or Spurs. He'll just say, "I'm not interested in you." If you know mm. what I mean, yeah. You, either want, you know, he'll sell the club as it's the greatest thing on the planet. And if you don't want to buy into his ideas, he'd rather spend thirty million on a a lesser player to buy into that idea, and he'll get more success with that. If you know what I mean, yeah. because why buy a player in like Ndombele? You've paid the big bucks for. He's maybe a better player, but he doesn't fit into what you want. You know, so you've got to bring in the players that will actually come in, fit your system. And then let the man do his job. That's what he's paid for, you know. So, and I think he'll do that. I think he'll, I think he'll rob loads of people next year. You know, he's the interesting one will be the Man City games because it's just going to be like fucking mental, <laughs> you know. Because he'll be the only he'll be the only manager that goes up against them with zero fear. Yeah, and he'll love the challenge because he was in the City group. You know what I mean? And coming right. to a club like Spurs, he'll, he'll be like, ah, right, come on then, Pep, let's have a go. And they love each other. Pep Guardiola said, you know, his, his Yokohama t- team were, were, what was this? Uh, Pep said they were a great side, you know, you know, and played brilliant football. You know, so it, Pep Guardiola rates them. You know what I mean? So the other, the other guy they're talking about Celtic getting is uh, Man City's number two. Sedesco or whatever you call him. So there's a lot of people going to want to come to Celtic now. Because they see it as a stepping stone to the Premiership, you know. Yeah. So. Well, Ali, I can't thank you enough for coming on this evening. Uh, you've given a fantastic more. insight to Tottenham's new head coach. So thank you so much for your time. Um, well, are you on social media? If people want to get in touch with you, uh, just on Facebook, uh, Ali Ross. You see the name there. Uh, I'm in Scotland there. Yeah. That's pretty much all I'm on. I'm not on Twitter or anything like that. Uh, got my own business and stuff. I think there's a Twitter account for that. Never use it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically it. But, yeah, if anyone wants to ping a message, then I'm happy to take that. But, well, thank you yeah, so much. I'll definitely want to come. I'll be badgering Craig. I'll want to come back on to say, I told you so. Uh, Absolutely. We'll, 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 we'll happily take the £100 of charity if it all goes wrong. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'll be... On the other side, though, I'll be wanting tickets for a final or anything like that that you get in it. So do we. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, somebody's, somebody's going to have to give that away because I've predicted it now. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to get in a final soon? You, um, can, tell Ange, yeah. you can tell Ange that I'm his new PR rep. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I'm off to buy his jumper. Ah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, uh, everyone called his football style up here Ange Ball. That's yeah. what they called it. So that's the one thing. Yeah. Uh, and I'll try and find out from the lads any of the chance that you still I've not been to the games for a while. Uh, but I watch every game. I've got them on the telly. I've got Celtic uh, TV. So, yeah, I watch every game. But uh, 
kids and business kind of took me away from being able to go. Uh, and the fact that my wife would stab me if I tried. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, but no, uh, I'll find out if there's anything, but I can't think of anything offhand. Um, no. Well, you've, you've been a great guest. Really appreciate your time, Ali. And uh, Craig, okay. thanks so much for coming back. Thanks for arranging this stream. Um, Ali's been great. And as you've said many times, lots of love for Ali in the comments. Um, thanks so much. And uh, last question for you. Yeah. Mm. What do you think the uh, first trophy Andrew's going to win at Tottenham? First me? One is that to me? Uh, do you uh, somewhere? First one he plays oh, in. First one he plays in. Well, that'll be the Carabao Cup then. I'll, that's I'll the, think, that's think, the one he'll be aiming for then. So that's the one he'll be aiming for. So, so yeah, yes. no, absolutely no problem. I, I knew Ali would be good. I knew Ali could give some really good insight into Foster Coglu and um, yeah, Ali. After the credits roll, if you just stay on the stream, we can we can um, uh, swap details so Chris can get you back on at some point and yeah, no, uh, discuss how it's going. So, but thanks for coming on, mate. And Chris, always, always. a pleasure to come on. And I hope the viewers have uh, have, have learned a bit tonight because I certainly have. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, guys. well Craig and Ali, thanks so much. Season, in fact, I don't need to enjoy your season. You're going to enjoy it. Anyway. I guarantee you, it can't be any worse than the last four years. Well, we hope that you get a manager that you want very soon and uh, keep well, winning those trophies because uh, we're very jealous of all those trophies you keep winning, yeah, Ali. Peter, so, uh, Peter, Law <laughs> Peter Lawwell we seems to always bring in good quality managers. So. Yeah. Good well, we, 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 we'll take anything right now. So hopefully yeah. Andrew's the man to take us forward and bring Tottenham Hotspur success. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, come on, you Spurs. <laughs>